types of golf balls deliver different results. Highly skilled golfers often use what's called a wound ball, a ball made of rubber thread wound tightly over a core because its flight is more controllable. But most people use what's called a two-piece ball, a ball whose core is covered in a dimpled material. Today's golf ball has really come a long way if you consider that the early ones were made of feathers. This is what's inside now, a bouncy rubber. They mix it up with other chemicals to make a hot batter, and then roll it out like a pie crust, cooling it between two huge steel drums. Next, they push the rolled up rubbery sheets into this machine called an extruder. There's a ram inside and it forces the rubber through a die. This makes shapes that resemble large marshmallows called slugs. A conveyor belt sends them to a compression mold machine. Here, a worker positions the slugs in a steel mold. The slugs often vary in color depending on the type of ball being produced. When the door closes, the bottom part of the mold presses up into the top part, applying over a ton of pressure. This is a shape and bake system. Because inside this mold, the newly rounded rubber is cooking at 167 degrees Celsius. Baking it for 13 minutes hardens it. Then, after it's cooled with water, a worker places a piece of slotted plexiglass over the mold. This holds down the leftover trimmings so that only the ball shapes get picked up by the vacuum. He peels off the excess rubber for recycling later. The marshmallow-shaped slugs have now been transformed into a solid golf ball core. A robot transports these cores to another mold. A ram pushes melted plastic through tubes and into a mold cavity. This forms the outside shell of the golf ball, complete with the dimples that will help the ball travel farther. This is an inside look at a ball with its new shell. This injection molding system generates four dozen golf balls every minute. The new balls are on the move. They roll into a bin which funnels them to a golf ball elevator. They're on their way to get cleaned up. Look closely and you'll see little pieces of leftover plastic on the ball shells. The next process will get rid of that. This is an automatic miller that removes the excess plastic. This is a golf ball before milling. And here it is after the flecks of plastic have been removed. Next, robotic arms shuttle the golf balls toward a chute entry. This is a quality checkpoint. If the ball is not smooth and uniform, it won't go through this hole. Now, a wheel rolls the golf balls towards a stamping machine. Robotic arms carry silicone pads to an etched steel plate. The pads soak up ink from the etched plate and transfer it to the balls. The pads brand each ball with a player number, the company name and the model type. Then beams of ultraviolet light harden the ink. They dump the balls into a bin, but they funnel some balls over to another stamping machine. This one does custom logoing. Now that's a stamp of approval. Next, an automated machine sprays the balls with polyurethane while they rotate atop spindles. The polyurethane protects the ink logos that have been stamped on the balls. Robotic arms carry the wet golf balls to a drying rack where they cook at 66 degrees Celsius for five minutes. Then they're done. And that's the technique behind the golf ball. It's up to you to explain your golf technique. <laughs>